My family's originally from northeastern Pennsylvania. We ended up in northwest Kansas because my parents realized that the future for our family to maintain a, a presence in the, in the ag industry was going to be very limited. So uh, in the early 90s, they began to look for other areas of opportunity. In 1999, we ended up moving and settling here in northwest Kansas. Today, we milk approximately 2,000 cows here. Uh, there is a, a heifer yard located on this farm as well that contains roughly around 1,000 head of young stock, uh, about 500 head of Springer heifers, and then the dry cows for this dairy and two of the outlying farms. But then on top of that, this farm also has an evaporative milk condensing plant located on it. And that condensing plant is responsible for taking in milk from the outlying farms uh, separating it into the skim and cream portions, and then evaporating out a large percentage of the water from the skim portion. That re reduces our environmental impact on, in terms of trucks over the road to move our product to market. But beyond that, it keeps water over top of the ground from which it came. And in Northwest Kansas, water conservation and water reclamation and water stewardship is a really critical deal. Traditionally, McCarty Family Farms has been a market-based dairy. And as we saw an increasing amount of volatility in the ag markets, whether that be the commodity markets uh, of row crops, uh, corn and soybeans, or the milk markets, or the beef cattle markets, uh, we knew that our business wasn't financially strong enough to withstand that volatility. So uh, we had an initial meeting with the milk procurement team from, uh, at the time, Dannon and they presented to us their vision for buying milk in the future, and our vision and their vision were immediately aligned. The aligned goals of, uh, of both of our teams, of both of our work families is really about stability, transparency, continuous improvement, and uh, a collaborating effort to make things better every day. It's really kind of pulled back the veil of where our milk goes, what our milk does, what our milk goes into, and ultimately how we can make our milk better to better fit those needs. Kind of as our business progressed and transformed and the Dan and relationship became a bigger part of, of who we were, uh, we were looking for an opportunity to grow outside of Kansas that filled a need in one of their milk sheds. We had always been intrigued with Ohio. We looked for probably two years at potential dairies, existing dairies, dairy sites, and you know, kind of came away with the idea in mind that, hey, if we're gonna do something, we need to build it. Luckily, we met some like-minded brothers that have become our partners there, uh, and they brought the cropping side, the land-based side to things that gave us a pretty unique opportunity to come in basically within 20 miles of Dan and his largest plant and build a facility where we could ship raw milk efficiently to them. So MVP Dairy stands for the McCarty Van Tilburg Partnership. It brings together two fourth generation farming families, one with an expertise, the Van Tilburgs in um, grain and crop farming, and the McCarty family, um, a, a rich history in dairy farming together that forms the, the dairy farm that we're in today um, in Salina, Ohio. We milk uh, about 3,800 cows here three times a day. Um, we milk those 3,800 cows on an 80 stall De Laval rotary platform. Um, we have a very specialized crew that um, training is of the utmost um, importance for MVP. So we train all of our employees through all of the, the stages and essentially their activities throughout the day. So my milking crew's trained, my herd health crew's trained. Um, herd health includes reproduction, um, vaccines, etc. cetera. Um, we also have a full-time maternity staff on, on board because we do CAV 365 days a year. One of the biggest focuses that we have here at MVP and across the board with McCarty Family Farms is a focus on sustainability, innovation, continuous improvement. A lot of that then is showcased in the Dairy Learning Center itself to really open the doors and, and walk people through um, all those innovations and, and essentially how we're producing milk today. So when people come and visit uh, MVP's Learning Center, I, I really hope that a lot of their takeaways revolves around Yes, we're a large animal ag facility, but we're a large family-owned facility. We all have children, members of the community working for us, working around us. You know, we want our business to be viable. 
uh, for long into the future. And that takes a lot of effort and care for these animals. And the other main takeaway is how food is produced. You know, we there's a lot of, of love and effort that goes into making an actual cup of yogurt that you're buying on the store shelf. And we just hope that people take away bits and pieces of that to realize what it actually takes that it doesn't just show up and appear on a store shelf. And we chose to go with Holsteins because we feel like uh, that animal gives us the most versatility uh, in terms of, of what she's gonna eat in a day and how she converts that to milk volume as well as components. Uh, we're very pleased with the output of the animals, uh, the, the docility of the animals. You know, they're very good animals, uh, easy to care for, um, and they're built to last. McCarty Family Farms in the West and MVP are moving to, if not 100% registered Holsteins. Years and years ago, our grandfather, our great-grandfather, and my father even, believed in good genetics and good cattle. And when we got to the point of growth in Kansas, that was kind of one of our goals, to say we got to get back to breeding good cows, identifying good cows. You know, we wanted that to be something that was part of our brand, in a sense. We believe that working with the Holstein Association is ultimately an investment in our future. We know that we can only control so many factors that go into making milk on our farms, but that the cornerstone of milk production ultimately is the cow. And without investing in her future and without investing in a, a ultimately a better cow, uh, we're going to reach a ceiling in our, our level of milk production. And we tie milk production on our farms back to uh, economical viability, sustainability, animal welfare. Milk production really is a key indicator of health and well-being of any dairy farm out there. And we know that for us to achieve the goals that we have for our cow herds, that we have to invest in the genetics and the genetic future of our cow herd. And the best way that we felt that we could achieve that was by working with ultimately people that were smarter and more knowledgeable in that area than we were. And that led us to the Holstein Association. There's probably nobody better to verify and validate what we have going on. I mean, it's a true indicator of your commitment to breeding and identifying and understanding the absolute best animal you can have. But there really is no better standard than a registered Holstein. We're now entering the phase where we've got cows good enough uh, that we can begin to flush those animals. Uh, we've got cows that are good enough that we can begin to market those animals. Things that we historically never really dreamt of and never would have realized without the, the relationship with the Holstein Association, those things are becoming reality. We underestimated the depth, I think, of the Holstein Association and the quality of people that they have to help tailor registered Holsteins to McCarty Family Farms. And one of the key things that we work with the Holstein Association on every single month is identifying the very best of our herd and identifying the very worst of our herd, with the goal being that we maybe chart a different course for the, the bottom of our herd, but that we also chart a different course for the top end of our herd. And we try to basically drive both aspects of the bell curve of our genetics of our herd forward at a much faster pace. And we wouldn't be where we're at today in terms of milk production or genetic profile without the help of the Holstein Association. I mean, there's days where literally I, I, I can't believe we're doing the things we're doing. Uh, 72 pound dairy when we start with Dannon. And if you go to MVP today, this morning, we were 102.46 pounds of milk. So to see a 30 pound increase in your animals over less than a 10 year span, eight year span, uh, I know we're doing something right. Genetically speaking, our cattle have just gotten better and it's, we, we see it not just in the production side. You see it in health events. You see it in every aspect of cow care. So it's, it's almost surreal at times. The, one of the best days I have every week is on the weekends that I work on a Sunday when I can just walk cows and the dairy's quiet, my email account is quiet, and I get to spend time with high quality, well cared for dairy cattle, Holstein cattle, that that's just a great day. 
We know that for us to continually improve, we have to continually improve her. And registration helps us achieve that. Registration helps us achieve a more traceable cow herd, a more traceable food supply chain. And those are all things that we think are gonna be really valuable for us from a, from a cow herd point of view, but also from purely a milk marketing point of view in the future.